Good day, everyone. Thank you for coming to today's Folio Forum, uh, which is sponsored by the Open Library Environment, EBSCO, and Index Data. My name is Peter Murray, and I'm the Open Source Community Advocate at Index Data and the host for today's event. Our topic today is the Folio Roadmap Update and Demo for the Bellis release. Today's session, like all Folio forums, is being recorded and will be posted to the Open Library Foundation's YouTube channel and to the resources section of folio.org. As an open forum, participants can see names of each other and any questions that are submitted. And we have muted everyone except for the speakers to ensure good sound quality. We value, value your participation and encourage you to engage in this topic. If you're in Zoom, you can use the question box at the bottom of the window uh, to enter questions and comments as they come to you. If you're watching us on YouTube, use the Twitter hashtag Folio Forum. Uh, I will gather the questions and the speakers will address them at the end of the presentation. We also encourage you to continue the conversation on the Folio Roadmap update and demo on the Folio Discussion website, uh, discuss.folio.org. Our speakers today are Harry Kaplanian and Theodore Tolstoy from EBSCO and Lisa Sogren from Chalmers University. Uh, we're going to start uh, with Theodore and Lisa, and then we will pass to Harry. Uh, take it away. Okay, I Thank will try. Theodore. Thank you. I will try to share my screen and, see, and do like this. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, we are. Thank Wonderful. You. Okay, thank you for having us. Um, as uh, Peter said, I am uh, Lisa Hagrim. Uh, I work as a librarian at Chalmers University of Technology. Um, and I've, I'm working with the Folio implementation here and have been doing so for the past one and a half years. So we are happy to be getting close to the actual going live with Folio later this year. And uh, Theodore, do you want to say th something about yourself? Well, I'm uh, an EBSCO employee working as a lead implementation consultant. I'm working with you guys to help make it all happen. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I think we should just dive into what we're presenting. Yes. And, uh, yeah, so the topic of this forum is uh, the Bellis release. So what we want to do is show that from the Chalmers perspective. Uh, we have our own uh, tenant with uh, our data and uh, some users, uh, real and fake, um, that we've been uh, testing and playing around with. So, um, so we're going to take you through the, the basic workflows of uh, getting uh, bibliographic data into folio users and uh, uh, doing circulation, basically, and explain how that works. So first, uh, just a few facts about Chalmers, in case you don't know what that is. So uh, we're a, a university in Sweden, uh, science and technology. Uh, we have 13 departments and almost 10,000 students, a little over 3,000 staff in round numbers. Um, the library employs around 35 librarians, 15 other specialists like uh, bibliometricians. Uh, we have some developers at the library as well. Uh, we have about uh, 14,000 patrons in our ILS. And um, what's worth noting is that we only, those library accounts, that uh, those patrons, that, that, that's only used for uh, borrowing print material. So if you look at our patrons uh, for our users for electronic materials. That's actually all those 9,000, 3,000 staff and students. So that's more. And our catalog uh, consists of about 260,000 print resources. So not a huge amount. And uh, really 
most of our budget goes to purchasing electronic resources. So uh, electronic resource management is really important to us, even though we're not going to be demoing that today. And uh, yeah, as you can see here as well, uh, in uh, 2018, we had about 22,000 checkouts, which is not a huge number either. Um, and we are one of uh, uh, three libraries who are working with EBSCO uh, to implement Folio with services from EBSCO. And, uh, and yeah, uh, so uh, let's get started. So uh, first we need to get uh, the books into Folio. And for us, the cataloging workflow doesn't actually start in Folio. It starts in the Swedish Union Catalog, which is called Libris XL. And the Union Catalog, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a collaboration um, between about 500 Swedish libraries. Uh, so we have a lot of colleagues to collaborate with there and whose knowledge and expertise we can we can use and uh, give back to. And uh, Libris is also uh, from uh, since last summer, it's uh, linked data native, which makes it really interesting. It's, um, it's, um, it's using a different two based uh, format. And also the cataloging tool is, uh, is completely mark free. So uh, when we catalog in uh, and Libris, uh, we we don't we don't see we don't have to think about the mark fields or anything. So, uh, what we do is we create instances in Libris. So that is where the uh, bibliographic data is. Uh, what is this book, book, book about? What's the title, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then when we get the uh, instance into Folio, we add the holdings and the items there. So that's information about uh, how many copies do we have. Where are they in our library? So that kind of more circulation management related uh, information, that's what we work with in Folio. We, we, um, we don't want to do anything with these instances in, in Folio. So we, we do all that work in Libris. And I'm gonna show you how that works. So let's see. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So, I have this book. I will start actually by checking that we <laughs> that we don't have it already in folio inventory. So folio inventory that is that's our catalog. It's a print catalog in folio. So I'm going to show you that it's not there so you can trust me <laughs> that I'm getting it in there through this process. So it's not there. Uh, so I want to go to Libris and see if uh, anyone else has already cataloged it because in really most cases uh, that, that's what happens. So we don't, we can add some data if we want to, we don't have to do a lot. And oh, I already looked for it. So here it is. Um, this is the one I want to use. Uh, so this looks wonderful. Uh, someone's done a very good job. So I just need to tell Libris that we have this uh, book in our collections. So I'm going to add a very, very summary holdings record and save that. I will go back to the instance record. And now I am going to click this little magic button here and we'll see what happens. Something is happening. Yes. And as you can see here, I am now in Folio. And not only am I in Folio, but so is the instance that we were looking at in Libris. So you can see the, the data from Libris has gotten uh, important, imported into here. We don't have all the data that was in Libris because what we've said is that uh, we're gonna import the stuff that we need for the, the basic management and, and circulation. Um, and just focus on what is what is important, what is needed. And so here I will uh, add a holdings record. So 
here we have a lot of fields that we could use, but I'm going to keep this very simple as well. So I will add a location uh, and I know it's this one. Um, I will also add a call number. So this is a very short name of a shelf and I will add the uh, name of the author here. Uh, so the, the sorting on the shelf. And that should be it. Okay, create new holdings record. So you can see here we have the holding um, and I will add an item as well. So you could add several items to, uh, to one holdings record, but I only have one right now. So I'm gonna uh, first add the barcode here. And then I will add a material type. We actually have only one here because we've decided that this is something that we do not really need to specify on the item level because we have sim similar data on the uh, instance level. Um, I'm just gonna make that easy. And then we need to add a loan type. This is something that we're using uh, more um, uh, actively. Uh, so this is what says, what this is eventually gonna decide uh, what you can do with this item uh, as a patron. So, and we don't actually need to add a location because that will be inherited uh, from the holdings record uh, as will the call number. So there's a lot of choice here, a lot of different fields that you could use, but we wanna uh, use these ones, Let's see. Okay, so there we have an item as well. So this is now ready to be checked out. And as you can see, uh, the going from uh, Libris to Folio, getting the data from Libris to Folio worked really fast, quite like magic. <laughs> can you tell us more about that, Theodore? Yeah. So actually there is not no magic involved, only a very nice bookmarklet and a very nice system that you're developers have helped with uh, developing. Uh, so could you go to the next slide, Lisa? Oh, this one. Yes. Yeah. So what happens when Lisa presses that magic button, uh, that bookmarklet, oh, we can actually go to the next slide, looks okay. for the instance ID on the Libris record. And uh, I'm going to request control so you can see my oh. mouse. You can see my mouse now, right? Yeah. Uh, so that Lib Libris ID, the instance ID, is then sent to this uh, system uh, that sits between uh, Libris and Folio. And this system checks uh, Folio if that basically does the same check that you did uh, manually in your in the UI. Mm. So does this Libris ID exist in Folio? Libris responds with a no. And Xiaomi, as we call these systems, uh, we are, yeah, uh, makes a, a OAIP image request to Libris and ask for uh, that record, that instance record in Mark XML format. Uh, Libris converts the RDF graph into a Mark XML representation of it uh, and returns the instance in Mark XML to Xiaomi. Xiaomi in turn uh, converts the Libris instance to a folio uh, inventory instance record and posts this uh, record into folio. Uh, there, uh, then Xiaomi just makes sure that this, this newly created record actually exists, that everything goes well. Uh, and hopefully Folio responds with yes. And that lets uh, Xiaomi talk to the bookmarklet again, who in turn redirects the browser into Folio. And that would happen there. So almost like magic. 
Um, over to you, Lisa. You're on mute. Thank you for pointing out that I was on mute, Theodore. Uh, so uh, now we have, uh, uh, we know how to get the books into Folio. So uh, for something to happen, we also need uh, users. We need staff users who can work with Folio, work within Folio, and we need uh, patron users uh, who, uh, who can borrow the books. And in Folio, those uh, are all in the users app. Uh, and the difference between uh, uh, staff and patron uh, will actually be that the staff, the staff users have permissions assigned that let them do things within Folio, like acquire a book or check something out or yeah, anything. And the, the patrons don't have that. Uh, but uh, but a, a staff user could also be a patron, and then they would see their permissions and their. Uh, loans in the same app. Uh, so for staff users, we, uh, we're going to use a single sign-on login. Uh, so that's talking to our uh, local systems at Chalmers, which is, I mean, a lot of the things we're talking about here is uh, how we have integrated Folio with other systems. So that's, uh, that's very important. And that's, uh, that's something that is important for us to be able to do with Folio and one of the, the positive things about Folio. Uh, and for patron users, uh, we want them to uh, be able to register themselves on the web. So we have, or we are in the process of making a custom registration form, uh, which also talks to the central user database. So we will get some data from there. And um, uh, when we've uh, looked at uh, how we want to use uh, the users app in Folio, we've started looking at what data we keep. Uh, about our uh, uh, patron users uh, right now in our ILS. And GDPR has, uh, which uh, if you're European, you've heard of the general uh, data protection regulation. Um, it has made us uh, think about how we can uh, minimize uh, the amount of data that we save uh, about patrons. Uh, so we've looked at what do we actually need. And we realized that things like addresses, uh, postal addresses, and phone numbers is something we very rarely use. And when we do, we could actually look it up uh, at that point. So we're, we're going to try to have very uh, minimalistic uh, user records. And I am going to show you how to create a user. Let's see. What's that one? So normally uh, a patron would register themselves on the web, but you could also do it uh, within Folio. So I would go to the users app, which is here, and I could click new. So I am going to register this person and she will have a barcode on patron card Let's see and she will be of the patron group staff because she's a Chalmers employee she's not library staff but she's a researcher here um, um, let's see the most important thing is here that she gets an email address so we can contact her if she needs to return a book or if she uh, to send her um, checkout receipt or anything. So I'm going to give her my email address now for demoing purposes. Um, let's see, this is really what we need right now. Okay, so there we have this new user and we will get back to her later. So let's see. And go back to the slides. And so uh, while the staff users, they will be working within Folio, the patrons will never actually see the inside of the Folio system. Uh, so uh, they will see everything through our discovery service, which is right now EDS. In theory, you could, of course, uh, connect Folio to your discovery service of choice, or you could 
have an OPEC. There is no built-in OPEC in Folio, but there could be an app, uh, or you, someone could make an app for that. Uh, but we, we want to use the discovery service. Um, it's important that our users have a uniform and uh, seamless experience. Um, where they don't have to move between systems uh, while they're looking for their uh, information, for their articles, for their books. So uh, if a user were looking for the book that we cataloged just now, they would go to EDS and it would look something like this <laughs> with a bit more Chalmers branding. This, this, is a, this uh, image is from our testing, uh, test uh, integration between Folio and EDS. Uh, so you would find the, the book and here's um, a little square with uh, real-time availability information. So there you also have the location. Uh, this is the shelf actually, and here it says that the item is available. And I will let Theodore talk uh, a bit more about how this integration is going to work. Yes, uh, we actually got it to work just a couple of days ago, so that screenshot is not entirely necessary these days. That's very it's good. Uh, oh, I'm going to request uh, your control again. Right. I uh, hope everyone can see my mouse. So for the bibliographic data flow, it's, um, you know, we were aiming for a very for a mark-free environment. We are now looking towards a mark, heavily mark-reduced architecture here as well. Uh, as it seems now uh, folio will be almost entirely mark free there are a couple of records that are not yet in libris that we will uh, have in in, uh, in folio for some time to test uh, and also to test uh, folio's mark capabilities out that's uh, but apart from that uh, there is nothing you know no mark needed for for folio to run and that's that's a, that's a great uh, step forward, I think. Um, also, uh, we are looking at this architecture where Libris is uh, the main source of bibliographic information and uh, we harvest Libris and put, put that data in, in full into EBSCO, uh, EDS, EBSCO Discovery Service. And uh, this uh, Xiaomi application that I showed you, the bookmarklet uh, that uh, harvest, uh, you know, one part of it is the individual record import that you saw, but also we will do nightly or even more, uh, more often have, uh, uh, you know, refresh the data in folio uh, or update it too. So it's uh, continuously up to date there. Um, we think that this architecture is, you know, uh, is the best one here because we actually, we add the rich data where it's needed for discovery and we reduce the, the amount of data that can get outdated or, or needs to be up to date. And, you know, since Libris is moving, I'm not sure, maybe not moving away from the same definitions, but there are like, there is a data loss when you when you um, uh, convert bib frame uh, to to mark twenty one and you know that loss would propagate if you would take that too long I think so it's perfect that we keep uh, you know try to keep the de the records in folio inventory in, in less detail and just just above the the you know enough to to uh, manage these resources in an efficient manner. Uh, some people know that EDS can harvest the AIP image and you don't have to rely on FTP. Uh, there are, you know, various things in here that they might, there are more modern ways of doing this, but since uh, Libris is a bit, you know, it's still early days for the new system, we, we decided to stick with, you know, workflows that we know work reliably and so on. 
uh, yeah, and what the R tag call here into folio inventory that we just got to work is what keeps it all, you know, connects it all together. So I don't know. Let me try to go to the next slide here. <clears throat> Keeping this architecture is also good because I think it makes there are a few initiatives now where the discovery services are connected, you know, are going towards uh, uh, linked data. You know, they're they're uh, trying to involve linked data in one way or another. And I think uh, having that connection between Libris directly is keeps those options open and for 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 innovation there. Uh, also here between Libris and Folio, we, you know, technically we're able to to take the RDF graphs from Libris directly and put them into, you know, do the conversion and then put them into Folio. But uh, since it's still early days for Libris, those definitions are still a bit, um, they could change. Bibframe is, is uh, just in an early version and so on. So that would keep a lot of, put a lot of uh, responsibility to the Chalmers developers to, to keep up with all the things that happens there. So it's it's more of a convenience. Uh, it would be really cool if we could have, you know, uh, pick the, the RDF graphs there, but uh, that's how it stands currently. Eventually. We'll Eventually we'll come yes. to you. It makes it more usable outside of the, you know, the Libris environment as well currently. So if mm -hmm. someone else wants to connect to their union catalog, this is, you know, something that could be shared. Okay, uh, that's what I had to say, I think. Over yeah. to you again, Lisa. Thank you, and I just accidentally skipped over to the next slide. I will do it again. Uh, let's see, there we go. Uh, so now we have the books, we have the patrons. Uh, they found each other in EDS. Uh, so uh, we're gonna do some circulating demos. Uh, borrowing, requesting, and returning books. Let's see if I can go over to Folio again. So now we're gonna go back to our new patron, Anna. Uh, so she found this book and we're gonna check it out in the uh, in the folio interface here normally there are two ways to check out a book at chalmers you can use the self uh, checkout kiosk uh the patrons can do that by themselves or they can come up and talk to the librarian who will assist them uh, by doing it this way so i will scan the patron uh, card here Yes, so we can see here, here she is. Um, and then I will scan the barcode of the book. And here you see that the book has been successfully checked out. And uh, a loan policy has been uh, activated. So uh, we know that she will be able to have this book for um, at the most 90 days and if someone else requests it she might have to return it after 14 days we have a due date here um yeah we have the time we have some more options here if we want to look at more details we don't need to do that now um so now this is such an interesting book that actually someone else wants to have it so uh since it checked it's already checked out um we have to request it. And the easiest way to do that would be to go to inventory. Uh, so let's imagine that another patron comes up and asks for this book. Um, looks like I will have to stall while we wait for inventory to open. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay, so the first hiccup. I'm going to just try using this instead. Uh, so we have the uh, the ISBN of the book. 
we know the patron uh, knows that they have their uh, course list. So we're going to search for this. Oh, but that doesn't look good. Darn it. Let's see. Um, I'm going to try it here instead. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, and as a side note, this ninety nine 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 that's that's a bug. We don't have that many records. Um, so things are moving ahead. Things are changing every day. Uh, so we have the ISBN. We're going to search for this. Hopefully, we'll find it this time. Yes, we did. So now we go to, down to the item record, and we can see here that it's checked out. So we're going to click here um, to look at the item. And actually here, uh, we have a button that says new request. So um, OK, yes, thank goodness. Uh, so here is information about the uh, uh, about the item that we uh, want. We could also have gone to directly to the requests app, which is also where you see uh, all outstanding requests. Um, and we could have gone there and entered a barcode here and done it that way. But I, I think this is more typical of what would we what we would do. And we would also uh, give um, patrons the ability to uh, request uh, uh, books through EDS that's gonna happen soon. We're working on that. So this is going to be a recall uh, request, uh, meaning that the, the patron who has it will have to return it straight away. And um, let's see. And we're going to enter a new patron uh, barcode here. And now I have something in the way of my screen. Okay, there. So um, we will uh, select a pickup service point. So that's that's where the patron wants to pick this book up. We're going to select this one. It's our main library. And then we click new request. Yeah, so now we've created a new request and what will happen is that the first patron, she will get an email saying that uh, that she needs to return the book uh, or she will get it soon. She will get a shorter due date, uh, which also reminds me that I forgot to show you the, the checkout receipt uh, that she got when she checked the book out. I can do that now. So this is the checkout receipt. Um, let's see. Um, so say that she uh, has actually finished reading this book. Um, so she will come back to the library and she is checking it in. So you have the check-in app and you scan the barcode of the item. And there we go. And here's a pop-up uh, window uh, which says which tells us that this book uh, is wedding pickup by another patron so we need to place it on the hold shelf and here's also here we can choose if we want to print a slip to put in the book uh, with the name of the uh, of the next patron of the requester I'm gonna try that and let's see okay, okay that didn't work very well on my computer but what you saw it's very short glimpse of was the actual uh, hold slip uh, that we will be able to print on our receipt printer that I don't have at my computer here and that we will uh, put in the uh, book so that we can find it. Um, so that was uh, what it looks like. Um, so we're just gonna have a look as well at how this works, which, which are the settings that uh, make this uh, possible. So what you have is circulation rules, uh, which uh, tells you um, that when a patron uh, uh, has a certain uh, patron group assigned to them, uh, it could be um, student, staff, 
uh, when this patron uh, wants to borrow uh, an item which has a certain loan type assigned to it, then a certain loan policy is activated, a certain request policy and a certain notice policy. So it's the relationship between these two that decides these. And I am going to show you what that looks like in Folio. Um, so here in the settings app, which is, you can find it there, uh, we go to circulation and circulation rules. So this is the circulation rules editor. Uh, each line is a rule and uh, uh, let's see. So this little blue text with uh, two heads or two busts uh, that's, uh, that represents the patron groups uh, and it has sort of a hierarchical um, uh, concept here. So uh, this means that this line is true for all of these since it's not indented. And what this says is that this is all patron groups. So for all patron groups uh, and for the uh, loan type normal, uh, these, these policies will be activated. So you have the standard loan policy, the this uh, uh, requesting policy, and you have this notice policy. This is the one that uh, was used when we checked out a book uh, just before. And then we have a special rule for course books, uh, one for like um, uh, phone chargers and other things. We have some books that don't circulate that are reference. Um, and we have one special patron group here. But as you can see, we don't have that many rules. Uh, we try to have the same rules for all patrons. Uh, and this is something that we have been um, that we've uh, looked at a lot when uh, when preparing for this implementation. So we've gone through what we have in in our current ILS, um, which rules are just are actually in use, which are just mysteriously there, uh, which are in use but have no items or yeah. Uh, so. So we're just leaving a lot of things that we don't want behind in this uh, move to folio. And we're trying to keep it really simple uh, so that it will be easy both for the staff and especially for the patrons to understand uh, why, why does this happen? Uh, why can I have this book? This one? So yeah, two simple rules. Uh, we're gonna, we'll see if we can keep it this simple, but we're gonna try. And uh, um, Speaking of simplicity, uh, me and my systems librarian colleague really like this uh, this uh, circulation rules editor. It's uh, it's we think it's really easy to use when you get the hang of it. Uh, you need to like look at the documentation, but then you have everything in the same place. It's great. Um, but you might want to uh, find out more about, for example, what does standard loan uh, type uh, mean, and then you or sorry standard loan policy mean. And then you would go here and look at the loan policies and you have it here. And you can see that this uh, is where it says uh, how long is the loan period? Um, how many times can a patron renew this item? Uh, what happens when it's recalled? How long can you have it then? Uh, so these kinds of things. And you have the notice templates. It's similar. You have, I think, Let's see, I think this is the one, oh, sorry, the notice policies. Uh, this is one that we used, and this is uh, um, connected to a notice template. So this is what the, the emails the patrons get when, when something happens, when they need to be told something. Uh, for instance, that they need to return a book. And we have the request policies, which uh, say, I think it's, let's see. Yeah, which kinds of uh, requests are um, are allowed for this uh, patron and loan type uh, combination? And if we go back to this, there are we're just using patron and loan type right now, but there are other parameters that you could use, like material type. That's the one we only had one of, so we're not going to use that. So, so there's like you can make these quite complex and you can have a lot of them. You could filter them if you had a lot, but we're gonna try to keep it this way. Um, let's see. So 
that's what I had to say about that. And now we've seen the, the book get into folio. We've, we've seen the patrons and we've seen the whole uh, uh, circulation cycle. So actually that was it for our demo. Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening and looking. Uh, and I think we would be happy to uh, answer questions if there's time for that. Uh, Peter can uh, chime in and or comments. And otherwise, you can, uh, of course, contact us. Uh, our email addresses are here. And you can also uh, find us on the Folio Slack. So, Great. Yes. Well, yes. Uh, thank you very much for uh, walking us through that. Uh, we did get some interesting mm -hmm. questions uh, from our participants. Mm -hmm. um, one uh, that came in was all mm -hmm. of the systems we've worked with have mm -hmm. false positives. Uh, and this question goes back to the, the point where uh, you were importing a record from mm -hmm. Libris uh, into Folio. Uh -huh. um, think uh, the, the systems think something is a duplicate when it really oh. isn't. Uh, can you force Folio to accept the title from Libris that uh, Folio mistakenly believes is already held? Well, the cure for that, I think, is the Libris ID. That mm -hmm. is unifer That's a URI, right? It's a universal resource mm -hmm. locator. It's, yeah. it's not... Uh, it's not an integer stored somewhere that could be mistakenly taken for another ID of sorts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and yeah, they have I'm put a lot of effort in, in making those truly, you know, unique on the internet. Uh, uh, so that's hopefully our architecture. <laughs> uh, it's, it's built on that and, and hopefully that's uh, the way they are gonna be treated. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. I think that's the short answer. Yeah, so we're um, not trying to match on ISBNs or anything like that. No. It's just the Libris ID, so that should be the same <coughs> as, as the one in Libris, since we're not changing anything in Foley. So it's almost a, a one-way enforced. Uh, every there, There's nothing that's, no chance to have a duplicate uh, in Folio that doesn't come from Libris itself. Uh, Never mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, okay. If, if the record comes from Libris, then it should not. We should not be able to import it twice. We should only be able to have one. Um, so, so that's that's the answer. Great. Uh, another question: Is there a, a way to batch load uh, users into the system? There. Uh... There are a couple of ways, but uh, at press, I think there is some work being done in this uh, area. There are, uh, uh, oh, I should have known more how far they are. There is an users important, importing um, module that has a nice API and it uh, leverages, you know, it reduces the, the lowest the threshold for a lot of things that comes with adding users into Folio. Um, there are improvements uh, for Chalmers. Using that, uh, it takes, oh, maybe I shouldn't guess too much. I have that, but it takes a couple of hours to you to add those, uh, how much is it, 12,000 users. And so it can be done overnight for most systems, I think, to, to migrate a lot of users. Um, so I think for users, that's, that, that, that's, uh, that's uh, fast enough. Uh, what we are, what the community is working with is to have, you know, loaders for, um, uh, for bib bibliographic records and such, where you have, you're looking at millions of records that you want to, you know, be able to process. Currently, we have to, to go through different, uh, you know, take shortcuts and, and go into the database and so on. But uh, it's uh, it's being worked on. Uh, I'm sorry to I don't know you know the current state of it because we we rely on these shortcuts. Mm -hmm. uh, another question: uh, As a Mark cataloger, I'm intrigued uh, 
by the possibility of less mark. Um, could you discuss a little where you feel mark is over efforting? That's yeah. That was the that's a, what over efforting. Over efforting is, wow. is the word that they used. Oh. Um, I, I, Could you uh, elaborate I'm on that? With maybe too much effort that, that yeah. Mark is is. Well, uh, I'm out spontaneous. I'm just thinking about the all the fields. While Libris was not uh, linked data, so like a few years ago, but we were still doing our cataloging there. So, uh, and that's where I started doing cataloging. Um, all the fields that we were were just um, not uh, think about. It's like um, oh, I don't remember what you call them. That like the, the numbers, like the leader, the the zero zero eight, uh, where you have sometimes the same information there, and you have it in the in the numbered fields uh, fields. Uh, but uh, in the, in the, the the practice is actually to just put it in one place, maybe, or you double it. And there is there were so many things that we just never used um but we sort of had to add a value because there had to be something uh so it wasn't really uh correct so that's that's kind of what i'm seeing that a lot of double information yeah i agree and uh, you know you have these very um what you call it ways of saying that database this is uh, uh something you know this kind of resource you can put that in in the 08 but yeah. still you just keep on yeah. adding all these um text strings yeah telling yeah. you that that in one language that this yeah. is a database but then yeah. you're in sweden and you know you have to put yeah two, at least two strings and we have like four yeah. official languages so you should put four strings in there when mm. you have this little code that the, mm. the opac could mm -hmm. have you know, interpreted. So that's yeah. what Libris is, you know, uh, coming to like, replace all of that with a link. And if you follow that link, you will get that string mm. expressed in mm -hmm. all the languages, you know, yes. in the world. Yeah. And, and then we can talk about, mm. you know, that that's. And you would only have to, ch if you mm. wanted to change that data, you would have to change it in one place and then would be linked to different yeah. places. So, yeah. yeah. Sticking, sticking with cataloging, uh, uh, Brian Watson and I had a, a, a bit of a, a back and forth uh, about the, uh, when the slide about uh, the bibliographic data flow uh, and the EBSCO knowledge graph pilot uh, were were up on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and in, as part of our back and forth, uh, we talked about uh, some of the, the underpinnings of, of linked data uh, in, uh, in the folio reference, uh, the, the folio uh, mm -hmm. data model. Yeah. Um, and uh, he was curious about uh, whether, uh, about using other linked data uh, alongside the, the EBSCO knowledge graph, uh, Wikidata, Homosaurus, et cetera, uh, as the name authority, um, I know that that linked data that that you know we've 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 designed Folio to be linked data ready, uh, mm -hmm. but we haven't built some of those linked data components. Do you have any thoughts about where uh, linked data is is fitting into your vision of uh, of cataloging between Libris and Folio? Well, I think first of all, when it comes to the instances and probably the authority data i think we would have to uh that would have to happen in libris um first uh or i would prefer that i mean i, I really want libris to be really developed because yeah um mm, so theodore do you have any good thoughts uh, well, what is just, uh, you know, from the top of my head where, where I see it could be really useful is when you, you would like to, uh, look at multiple, uh, uh, I don't know if you have looked into the, the, 
that codex vision mm-hmm. that uh, Vince shared. Yeah. Uh, and that's where it really comes into play, right? Where, where you can uh, most likely pull in, like you have the electronic, the knowledge bases, yeah. like multiple ones, mm-hmm. multiple, you have the union catalog, not just what you have, but also what's available to you. Yeah. And perhaps also the, 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 the vendors uh, mm-hmm. catalogs and yeah. by you know then you need some authority data to to connect that all together and if you can achieve that then 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 you can really start doing yeah. you know overlap analysis and and uh, and all of that so that's where i would yeah. like it to 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 go right yeah. uh, we haven't been too involved in the in the cataloging parts of folio because we you know we have no. other focus areas but yeah. um, but of uh, course i of mean of course it plays in yeah. there you know with yeah authority data is like that's the solution for so much in cataloging where where you know you have all these duplicates or almost duplicate strings where yeah mm, yeah and and since uh, folio doesn't um, require mark you have the mark cat mark cataloging app that is coming up you could also have a bit frame cataloging app um so I mean, it could come into play very uh, um, uh, mm, tangibly there, uh, and, and we would. I mean, we would like to see that happen. Uh, we would still be working with libraries. I mean, that's that's our that's our cataloging app right now, mm-hmm. our big frame cataloging app. Um, but I mean, I'm I'm very much looking forward to seeing. Uh, uh, live linked data applications and initiatives uh, to see like how, how can it be used and, and, and I think that's it kind of needs that to to take flight and to be something tangible that that people who work uh, in the systems can can actually see and, and, and trust and and I just want everything uh, I, I just want technology to make everything easier and more okay. efficient uh, so that I don't have to uh, change things in different places the same thing because I know that th- that's not going to happen people are going to forget to change something there. So we need uh, uh, the computers to, to make that connection and, and help us with that. That's a good point, Lisa, uh, the, bringing up the fact that the, the, the app-based model uh, anticipates, well, we know MarkCat is coming, that's mm-hmm. being developed right now, but it anticipates a bib frame cat. It, it, mm-hmm. it anticipates a, a Dublin Core cat. Yes. Uh, you could go uh, beyond like libraries and uh, it could be something for, I don't know, museums, other cultural heritage institutions. Um, yeah. Uh, I hope and where we would leverage the, the inventory app to keep track of our instances and items mm. that that kind of bib frame app might refer to uh, um, linked data that's that's being mm. uh, curated outside uh, mm. our folio system yeah. yep um, is it another question is it possible to delete loan policies and uh, notice rules um. Yeah, got it. Is the person who asked this coming from Sierra? Uh-huh. In our current dial list, we can we can't delete. All. <laughs> <laughs> but um, wow. Um, let's see. Um, okay, there are two parts of this question. Is there a delete button right now? Has that been implemented yet? And uh, uh, is it possible? I don't. I should I look? I, you know, I, I, oh. it sounds like it's a it's a pretty specific question. Yeah. I know I've seen, so I, I help manage the, yeah. the translation yeah. strings, and I know I've seen translation strings come through uh, our our localization platform mm-hmm. uh, that say you can't delete this loan policy because it's in yeah. use. Yeah, that should sort be, of uh, leads me to believe that there is a delete function yeah, that, there, okay, that is checking. That there is a delete function, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be updating our system soon, so I'm just going to try to delete one that I know is in use and see what happens. Uh, okay, then, yeah, okay. I'm not going to tell you what happened. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a live trial, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so I think that's, that needs some developing, but yes, uh, it's possible. 
there's a question here that I think I'll answer. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is, is Folio being used in a consortium setting? Uh, and if so, what's the largest? Uh, because I don't believe um, uh, Chalmers is part of a consortium, uh, but there is a consortium special interest group uh, that is very active. Uh, and two of our, uh, our as in the communities, uh, uh, implementations are going to be consortia. Uh, one is the five colleges in Massachusetts uh, for which uh, EBSCO is, is doing the implementation. Uh, and the second is a series of, of colleges in the Boston area, the Fenway Library Organization uh, for which index data is, is uh, doing the implementation. Uh, so there are two active uh, uh, consortia that are implementing uh, Folio, that, that are, are getting ready to implement Folio. Uh, Chalmers isn't one of them, uh, but if uh, to the person who asked that question, if that's of interest to you, I uh, encourage you to look at the consortial special interest group on the uh, Folio wiki uh, and the consortial special interest group meets on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, uh, if that's of interest to you. Chalmers is, of course, part of different consortia. They have an electronic buying consortia. And uh, I visited them a couple of weeks ago, and they were thrilled to see that their, like, metadata was flowing into, uh, you know, the ERM parts of Folio and so on. So that's another discussion, of course. But uh, and also what Lisa showed here is the that's the bibliographic consortia of sorts. So you can absolutely be part of the consortia. But yeah, that's not the question. But I just want to elaborate on it. Thank you. Yep. Um, another question: Is there an acquisitions module? Uh, is Chalmers uh, is acquisitions a, a part of uh, yes. the, the Chalmers implementation? Yes, yes. So I think let's see. So the acquisitions functionality is split up into a couple of different modules uh, or apps. Uh, so you have the orders app, you have the organizations apps. I think that's the ones we'll be using for acquisitions. Um, so it's you make purchase orders and. And uh, um, you connect them to uh, organizations, which are vendors. Then th there will also be a finance app, uh, which could be part of that, but that we are not using because we have a central finance system at Chalmers. Uh, so absolutely there are. Uh, so uh, uh, we just didn't show them today, but uh, it's, uh, it's looking good. There are some demos. There was a, a demonstration of the electronic resource management modules as a folio forum a month or two ago. Uh, and so uh, there's a, a recording of that on the Open Library Foundation YouTube channel uh, that you can go back uh, and watch. Yeah, there are a lot of nice things coming very soon. I think, you know, we were anticipating having EDI as a part of the implementation, but the Swedish vendors are in uh, transition mode as well for their infrastructure, so we're not able to hook up to their system, you know, at go live. Uh, did you mention the check-in functionality? Generally? No, we did not. Yes, that's, no, that's part also of part of that we will use for of, yeah. So check-in of uh, for serials. ongoing resources. So it's not the same as checking in a book that was checked out. This is such confusing terminology. <laughs> that is going to be reproduced in Folio. We can have a discussion about that sometime. Yeah. We might have to have you back. Yes, for that debate. <laughs> should, we have, should we use the word check-in for two things? Yeah. Does authority data reside in Folio or are headings only controlled uh, via linked data? In uh, Libris, you know, the, the records that you saw, those are, you know, then we, we used uh, this, uh, the string representations of the data. Mm -hmm. In Libris, uh, it's all links, right? Uh, and those links are, can be serialized into strings. Yeah. And we are using the Mark serialization, mm -hmm. Mark 21 serialization version of, of those links. So there is no authority data. And 
in in folio at this but point. yeah i think uh, is, work with the the mark cataloging app i think that i know it's if it's going to lead to or if it's already if they're, they're working on a, um authorities as well yeah because i haven't been keeping up with that enough since we're not we're not going to use it but i think that's definitely part of uh, of that work but that will be mark authorities then i want with some embarrassment to go back to the previous question about consortia because of course in my u.s centric brain i missed the fact that that the of the german consortia uh uh gbv and hbz uh are are large uh, uh, service utilities in Germany, uh, and they are members of Olay and, and very active in the development uh, of Folio uh, as, as something to be implemented for their members. Uh, and so I apologize uh, to my colleagues uh, from Germany for uh, forgetting to, uh, to uh, uh, name you as part of that consortia answer. Uh, can institutions use alternative union catalogs, uh, for instance, uh, WorldCat or, or Copac? I'm not familiar with Copac. Uh, over Libris. So yeah, this is one of the advantages of not uh, of us not going the full length of uh, uh, taking those RDF graphs and turning them into folio. So. What we are doing, we are looking at the regular OAI PMH bibliographic feed in XM, Mark XML format. So any, basically, you know, any uh, any catalog that has OAI PMH uh, server functionality could be a source for Folio. Uh, you know, that's on a architectural level. There, you know, would be some. There are some specifics here for Chalmers, but that could be, uh, what you call it, that could be uh, developed so it could be handled for, for multiple institutions and so on. So this is a Chalmers project currently that have been developed with, with help from, yeah, uh, EBSCO, me and a couple of others. And uh, uh, that will, that was developed with, with the intent of, uh, releasing it open source. Uh, of course, it's under heavy development and we're still like working on it right now. So, uh, but in due time, uh, that's something that we could share. Uh, to speak into the community aspect of Folio. Yeah, uh, it would be a great contribution from, from Chalmers solutions. doing that, but yeah. Yep. We, uh, they are certainly busy doing, you know, we have that user registration app and so on. So there are, there will be uh, artifacts here that I think you will share, right, Lisa? And, yeah. and, and, uh, and yeah. yeah, but you know, we have the goal target here uh, in our, in our sites first and have and, to make it uh, live first. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so early on, uh, Lisa, you mentioned uh, integration with a, a single sign-on yes. uh, environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's yes. a question, is there integration with Google user management app or an LDAP connector? I think I want to bounce that question over to Theodore. Well, the authentication for Folio is SAML based. So if you're a SAML, uh, if you have a SAML, uh, compliant uh, login service, then you should be fine. Uh, I think that SAML, there's a mod, SAML module basically, and, and uh, you could have a look in that, and I'm pretty sure it would be uh, possible to adopt that to something else as well, but uh, that's how it works currently. For, for end users, we are relying on EDS capabilities there. There are SAML, there are another, a couple of, you know, options there. And of course you can connect that to Open Athens and similar things as well. And then, you know, you have the whole world open to you. So, yeah. Yeah, it's also, I think, possible to plug something else in uh, like LDAP because the, the, the SAML authentication is just another module. And so I, not sure the logistics of doing something, but maybe swapping out SAML and, and uh, putting in a, an LDAP module in its place uh, might be possible as well. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, there are uh, in uh, what you call it uh, middleware that could make um, SAML, uh, yeah, could make uh, your service act as a SAML compliant server or client as well. So mm -hmm. it's possible. But we should go back to the fact that, you know, use end users. Or maybe yeah, at least for Chalmers, they will not. We will not. Uh, they will not uh, authenticate themselves through in Folio, but but more rather than through EDS. So it's just an ID and uh, yeah. So great. Uh, does uh, Chalmers have any reporting apps set up in Folio? Uh, I don't know if you're ready to talk about Folio. I have a feeling that reporting is a, a Folio forum all to itself. Uh, and so uh, yeah. feel free yeah. to, uh, yeah. uh, 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 as one might say, punt on that question. Uh, and maybe we can uh, tackle that in, in a, uh, a future forum. Mm -hmm. I think so. There are, um, uh, yeah, I'm not up to date to that. I think uh, FSE, like the EBSCO offering, will come up to, with some uh, uh reporting uh offering and uh, that might or might not be the same as the, the yeah but that's that's another issue uh, yeah that's fair it. enough yes. yep mm -hmm. yep um how granular can the circulation policies be configured uh patron type library mm -hmm. location format yes yeah. let's see so patron Type. Maybe you could share um, that uh, editor. Yeah, yeah. I, the thing is, um, let's see where I have it. Um, it's, I'm saying it's it's so uh, easy to use this editor, but it's also, um, you don't really see what it's called. So, uh, so this is, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. So this is a patron group. This is the material type that we are not really working with. Uh, um, to be honest, I don't remember what the others are, but it's it's basically, uh, I think it's a locations material type um, uh, patron groups. And we could actually um, look just for a moment at the uh, location. Oh, it's not okay. I don't have permission to look at that right now. Which also controls what you can see here, because that kind of that changed with uh, with an update uh, a while ago. If you can see that, uh, but the location are hierarchical uh so you can you have like a institutional uh, uh location and then within that you have a, a campus and i will be able to show you this another way i hope um so so, so what i want to say is that when i say that you can have location in um in the loaners that could actually be uh, a couple of different okay now i'm in the wrong place uh a couple of different locations or different levels um, yeah. but uh, we haven't really uh, looked uh, at that lately since we were pretty happy with just having the the loan type and the patron uh, because we, we've just realized that we can actually no I'm just gonna give up doing this I'm clicking the wrong thing uh, I can't uh, I'm sorry. But, um, yeah we're, we're happy what we, we can do with that um, because we realize that it's it's actually enough um, so, I think what you can do, yeah, you can also do like very broad definitions at first and then you can, mm -hmm. you know, go into detail because these rules are inheriting each other. So you can like get very specific and, yes. and you can still have like these uh, broad overall rules. So it, it opens for a lot of, you know, and yeah. also due to the fact that you have a lot of Look, levels in the location hierarchy you don't have to you know we have seen some pretty uh, uh, what you call it extensive loan rules where, where you have a lot of locations and then you have to define you know your loan rules for each and every location and that matrix get pretty quickly pretty you know large I think I heard numbers like a thousand loan rules but that's if you have a hundred locations that you know or, or that mm. That, that builds pretty quickly. So 
I think in in this case where you have a hierarchy of of, mm. of uh, locations and so on, then you can mm. be very expressive in, yeah. in a lot less language yeah. there. Uh, and I wish I, I could share the, the a good link to a documentation about the lone rules editor. But it does take it does take uh, a few minutes to uh, to understand how how the lone rules are built up. But when you do, they're 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 very yeah. logical. We should also raise that it has turned into a circulation editor yes, as well, right? That's true, because yes. you have so also notices, yes. the rules for notices Absolutely. and for yeah. what am I missing? Uh, uh, requests. Requests. Oh yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's uh, yeah. part so of that, that, that matrix in, as well. Uh, mm -hmm. In one place, which is one of the great things, I think. Scary, so. scary, and also very yeah, <laughs> powerful. Mm -hmm. Great. I think we've got one more question uh, that might lead us into a brief roadmap update, uh, and that is: Is Chalmers using Folio in production? Uh, Give us right. an update on your uh, go live plans. <laughs> oh, uh, well, this year, and it's almost summer, so uh, the, the second half of this year, autumn. Um, so we right now we are testing. Uh, so we have a tenant uh, where we are, we have the bibliographic data, we have uh, loaded users into it, we have um, test migrated some loans, and when I say we, in this case, I mean Theodore. And, um, this has been doing all that. So, so we're doing, um, we're testing the migration. We are testing the functionality. We are uh, doing some tests with our staff, letting them try it out. We are, uh, uh, we are waiting for some uh, functionality which will show up. And we are, yeah, doing a lot of, yeah, a lot of testing, a lot of um, uh, uh, noticing some bugs and want to get rid of that as soon as possible. Uh, so, yeah. I think that was a long answer to that. Uh, yes or no question. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I do apologize on behalf of Harry. Uh, I, I'm not sure why he didn't uh, join uh, the, uh, the webinar today uh, to give a, a roadmap update. Uh, those that have been in or tracking the Folio project for a long time uh, know that that uh, Harry is uh, kind of the the, uh, the the person in the in the project uh, who's taken on the role of keeping the roadmap up to date, uh, and so he is is m the person most uh, uh, versed in uh, the the current state of the roadmap. Uh, but I can give a, a little bit uh, of an update. Uh, and that is that uh, the, the demo today has been based on uh, the Bellis release uh, that uh, Chalmers and, and EBSCO have been working with. Uh, we are right now in development of the Clover release, uh, which is in, uh, geared towards uh, uh, stabilizing uh, the, the uh, APIs and uh, working through performance uh, issues, uh, uh, getting the performance uh, to the place that we want it, uh, and working out uh, some of the final defects. Uh, some of those uh, we tripped up today, uh, and if uh, there aren't uh, issues logged for those already, uh, I, I expect uh, shortly after the conclusion of this webinar, uh, somebody will, will log those issues for us to work on. Uh, uh, that that Clover release uh, is is thought to be our, our first library release, uh, the one uh, that uh, we're gearing up for uh, uh, Chalmers to run in production. Uh, there's also continuing work on on invoices and and the funds app, uh, additional uh, import features, uh, and additional. Uh, external integrations uh, with uh, uh, OEI PMH, uh, with uh, uh, SIP uh, and NSIP. Uh, I think Z3950 also falls into that category. Uh, so how Folio will interoperate uh, in an ecosystem. Uh, in the third quarter, uh, we are looking at the DAISY release 
which is uh, kind of what we're calling the early adopter uh, uh, developer uh, version of the software. Uh, it has uh, uh, more things in it uh, than uh, Chalmers is, is using uh, as part of their go live. Uh, and right now the, the uh, developers and the product owners are, and the, the, uh, the, the first implementers are working through a prioritization process uh, to determine what's going to be worked on in the third quarter of 2019. Uh, there's a, uh, an update that's happening uh, at the product council meeting uh, tomorrow, uh, scheduled uh, for tomorrow uh, morning Eastern US time, uh, where the, the results of that uh, are going to be talked about. But we expect uh, things like advanced circulation features, uh, acquisitions, uh, license contracts, and package management uh, batch operations, uh, reporting tools, uh, additional external integrations, uh, additional work on reporting and analytics. Uh, the fourth quarter uh, is the Edelweiss. Uh, Edelweiss. Uh, I need to get a German <laughs> accent in there, I think. Uh, uh, early adopter beta one. Uh, uh, which is going to be focused on the next round of libraries, uh, a round of, of stabilization uh, and performance uh, focus. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at multi-tenant uh, consortial features and uh, single uh, tenant consortial features because of course uh, the five colleges and uh, Fenway Library organization uh, are going to be part of uh, those early adopters. Uh, first quarter of 2020 is the flamethrower, flame, uh, flamethrower, flame flower release. Uh, in case you haven't noticed a pattern here, uh, we have our, our releases are based on flower names uh, and we're marching through the alphabet from, from A to Z. So uh, Aster, Bellis, Clover, Daisy, Edelweiss, uh, Flame Flower is our uh, first quarter of 2020 release. Uh, and here things get a little murkier because it is uh, so far out there. Uh, when Harry gives a presentation, he, do he talks about uh, the cone of uncertainty in planning. Uh, and we're, we're, we're very much in the, the wide part of the cone of uncertainty uh, as we're planning for the first quarter of 2020. Uh, the, the uncertainty comes from uh, who's stepping up to, uh, to uh, uh, be a part of, to, to adopt Folio, uh, to uh, make it their, their library system. Uh, what their needs are in a gap analysis. So what is it that we need to work on to have them go forward? Um, and all of that's leading to the, the uh, second quarter 2020, uh, what we're thinking of as, as the general release or, or the goldenrod uh, release of Folio. Uh, this graphic uh, is on the Folio wiki. Uh, and in fact, if you go to the top bar on most of the Folio websites, uh, and I think it's under about this project, uh, there's a, a link to the platform uh, and roadmap. Uh, and so we'll update this uh, as time goes on uh, with additional uh, points from uh, our plans for the roadmap update. Uh, and uh, on behalf of, of Harry, uh, I'm, I'm going to apologize again. I'm not sure where uh, Harry is, but I'm sure if he was here, he would apologize uh, as well. I'm going to pop into our uh, questions to see if there's anything else that we might want to answer. Uh, there is a question about um, a, a report about the single sign-on with all of the technical details. Uh, Theodore, I'm not going to put you on the spot for that, uh, but uh, there, there is uh, some documentation in the, uh, the, the SAML uh, uh, GitHub repository. Uh, and so if you want to get technical, maybe it is you have to go to the, to the GitHub repository uh, and see what's there. 
Um, anything you might want to add though, Theodore? No, that would be my go-to. Yep. Uh, and of course, come into the, the uh, community uh, and ask questions uh, that can be done uh, in, uh, in Slack uh, or uh, on discuss.folio.org. Um, this is a community effort. Uh, so come join uh, the, the community in the discussion as we build Folio. Uh, any parting thoughts, uh, Lisa and, and Theodore? Not really, but it was fun to be here. Thank you. Yeah, for thank you for inviting us. us. Wonderful, so. wonderful. Yeah, happy to. We've seen some of the other apps, uh, walkthroughs of them, mm -hmm. and and we haven't seen anything from uh, circulation in a while. So it was oh. it was great, mm -hmm. uh, Lisa, to to walk through that uh, and show the the current status of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we. Yeah, uh, yeah I just oh, want to say I, that if anyone has any more questions. Get in touch. Very generous yes. of you. Thank you. This concludes today's Folio Forum on the roadmap update and demo for the Bellis release. Uh, we've been live tweeting the forum uh, for a short recap of links and links to resources. Uh, look for the Folio Forum hashtag. Uh, from the Folio underscore LSP Twitter account. And as always, thank you to the social media team from EBSCO for that live tweeting. The recording of today's forum will be posted to the Open Library Foundation's YouTube channel shortly. Uh, and also, if you're interested in demos of other Folio library service platform apps, uh, such as uh, MarkCat, uh, ERM, the usage app, uh, you can also find those on the Foundation's YouTube channel. Uh, look for the, uh, the uh, Folio Forum playlist. Uh, thank you to our speakers, uh, Theodore and Lisa, and to everyone who asked questions and added comments. Have a great rest of the day. <laughs>